everyone um good afternoon or good evening uh, this is good morning for me i'm at like 7 30 years right now um anyways um so topic today as amit said is about agile mindset lynchment method uh, so primarily we will be focusing on how to grow agile mindset to gain true benefit of agile transformation so I assume nobody has problem with Agile mindset. Everything's going fine. All Agile culture, everything, right? Not really so, right? Um, so we'll be talking quickly about why Agile mindset. Uh, what is Agile mindset anyway? Really light touch. I assume that you you come from Agile background, any here and there. So I'm not going to spend time on that. The key deliverables today would be how to grow Agile mindset. Um, again, uh, this is a half a day session so i'm trying to cramp in like uh, one hour or like 40 minutes so you might feel a little bit rushed and um but i do have a little bit detailed guide in linkedin uh, there is a linkedin uh, article there in the, the uh, this document as well so you can ask for a guide um so you know uh, we'll, we'll go we'll do whatever we can do today okay all right um <clears throat> so generally um, you know, organization, they, they do as a transformation, they invest on as a transformation uh, to gain, uh, adapt to market needs at a speed, right? Agility, reduce time to market, deliver highest value continuously, highly engaged team, innovative solutions. I mean, there are tons of other things that why they want to really uh, do as a transformation. Uh, some actually do just for the heck of being agile. They don't even know what their goal is. But generally, we have seen any many times there is a missed target. Are you getting the benefit of agile transformation that you expect? Truly, are you getting it? If not, have you wondered why? Right? So, <clears throat> sorry. So, Generally, what we have seen is organization invest in Agile, uh, you know, they start doing the Agile practices, right? They do Kanban or Scrum or whatever. And then this Scrum and Kanban are very good at unveiling the systematic issue that you have in organization. And then what we have seen is the leadership actually utilize the traditional mindset to solve this problem. And that's the recipe for failure, right? Because you just do the practice and you don't have a mindset to solve the problem in an agile way. That's where the agile mindset is really critical, right? If you have an agile mindset, if the organization has, grow, has um, developed agile mindset, number one, it enhances the, your agile practice adoption, right? Number two, it helps resolve the systematic issues. For example, let's say you are having daily standup. In daily standup, you're not getting engagement within the team. So if you have agile mindset, which is let's say collective ownership, one of the agile mindset, then definitely the daily standup becomes more interesting. It becomes more interactive. They wanna help each other, right? And same thing, if let's say for example, um, you, you have you have an issue of dependency issue. One team is dependent on other team, right? And then if you solve from traditional mindset, probably what would you say is, well, if you're dependent, then we need to make sure uh, you guys have, uh, you deliver on time. If not, we can escalate to your boss or, you know, VP or SVP, whatever it is, right? But if you go with agile mindset, again, collaboration, then you'd like to collaborate with them ahead of time. You wanna understand what happened, what's the communication, miscommunication, all those things, right? That's why, so basically, as a mindset helps at a two end, one is resolving the systematic issue, another one is helping the agile practices become more effective, right? Um, so that's why, so basically, as a mindset, doing as versus being as I'm sure you know about it, right? Doing Agile again, following the practices, you do Kanban, Scrum, you know, all those stuff, right? And you gain some of the benefit, 
it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any benefit. Absolutely, it has benefit. And don't quote me on the percentage there, but it does have the improved visibility, communication, increased productivity, some ability to adapt to changing priorities, right? But not to the extent that being as I will provide you, where you have a employee engagement, leadership at all level, customer delight, continuous learning, innovative solutions, right? That's at a being as well, right? Um, so what's the man, Agile mindset anyways, right? Well, I mean, Agile mindset is described by four values, you know, the four principles and the values, right? And 12 principles. And these are manifested by a lot of different practices. And now they have added, originally the Agile started from those four values and 12 principles, but now there are a lot of other books, you know, new thoughts that's been adding on top of Agile mindset, which it's actually making it better and better as you go along, okay? Just like intent-based leadership, there to lead, management trio, heart of Agile, modern Agile, Niam, there are many, many other books and many other thoughts that are coming in and it's actually fueling the, the value of Agile and all of these are totally on Agile mindset, okay? <clears throat> so, there are a lot of items, sorry for the busy slide here. Um, there are a lot of things related to Azal. I just kind of brought, brought in a lot of things from multiple, uh, multiple um, areas and, and like collaboration, psychological safety, collective ownership, servant leadership, I mean, you name it, right? There are many, many different um, aspects of Azal mindset, right? Um, so I'm not going to go in detail uh, because uh, it's going to take the whole session just talking about this, right? So here's uh, one thought that <clears throat> kind of we need to understand um, how the mindset works, right? So let's say you have some result, right? Result is outcome of the action and the behavior that we perform and action and the behavior is because of the belief and the thinking that we have, right? So belief drives the action, right? So, so whenever any new situation happens, let's say, for example, you're walking in a college or in a, in a office and somebody kind of looked at you, but <clears throat> did as if he did not look at you, he didn't say hi to you. Okay, situation comes in and you start thinking about that. All we thought, well, he's ignoring me. I mean, first of all, he, he, he did not wave at me. Well, that's you, you kind of uh, give, infer that. And then you, you give a meaning that, well, he did not say hi to me. And then next is, let's say, then you start believing that maybe he doesn't like me, right? And then the action and behavior comes in, then say, well, maybe I don't wanna care him as well, right? And the result comes in like your, your, your friendship started kind of a, going apart, right? I'm just giving one simple example. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got some sore throat here today. Um, so, so that's where you, you evaluate, a, evaluate a situation in a, in a sequence of event that happens before you hit the result, right? And we'll have a lot of examples related to Azal itself, but I just wanted to give some examples which is like totally non Azal, right? So, so the key thing is if you want a, a good relationship there, meaning your action and behavior, just trying to change your action and behavior will not yield the result, right? You have to think of what's your belief. That's where you need to think about, right? So let's go in a little bit as a example. Let's say, for example, same example, daily standup. You have a daily standup and the result is you didn't get the engagement in daily standup. And the action and behavior is people are not uh, just they are giving their own update. They are not concerned about others. They are not willing to listen to others. There's no conversation, right? And then maybe 
the belief is, well, I mean, somebody really said that you need to do daily stand up. I don't even like it. Uh, it isn't il any value, right? They didn't really that, that belief that they have that does not provide any value. So telling them, say, you need to speak more, you need to speak more, you need to communicate, you need to interact. It's not gonna yield the result that you're looking, which is the engagement, right? They may do just when you are there, but it's not a long-term long -term, uh, solution. So what you need to work on is what is the belief that you have? Why there is no interactions that's happening, right? And then when you work on a belief and try to correct the belief, which means, let's say in this example, they're saying that they, it doesn't, uh, they don't, um, they, they don't believe that there is a, there is a, uh, sorry here, my screen is, sorry. So, <clears throat> Maybe the belief, the belief of them say, hey, we, it doesn't eat much value, it eats much value, the daily standup, and that's where you need to work, right? Sorry, you, you may feel like, oh, I thought I was gonna talk about agile mindset, this seems like psychology, but yeah, definitely psychology is involved in agile mindset, okay? So if you look at the same concept here, as you said, the mindset drives the behavior, behavior drives the result. But where the mindset comes in from? Mindset actually comes from your experience, right? What are the experience that you have that builds over the time that builds the mindset, the belief, right? And result, once you have the result that reinforces your experience as well. So here's the super great opportunity for leaders actually. That's why I have focused a little bit on the leadership on this presentation. So they, primarily the leaders have a great opportunity to create the right experience so that people will have the right mindset and the beliefs and they can do the right, perform the right behavior to get the right result. For example, let's say leaders reward failure of bold ideas. Let's say that's the experience that leaders create. And then the employee will get the belief that it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail, right? And then if they believe that it's okay to fail, they can come up with bold new ideas. And if you have a bold new ideas, risk taking ideas, then you have an innovative solution, right? So that's the result, right? So, so that's why we wanna have to focus on experience which will create the, uh, forms the mindset and beliefs and, and drives the behavior and hence the result, okay? Uh, when we do the agile, uh, agile transformation, what we like to focus on two aspects, of course, the practices and the agile mindset. And then we wanna do practices, mostly bottom up, agile mindset top down, because agile mindset needs to start from, from top right? Leaders should model the Hazal behavior. That's why leaders really play a very pivotal role on building the Hazal mindset. Because if people do all the practices and everything, but if the leaders is, does not have the Hazal mindset, it's not going to work, right? If leaders comes in, we're doing sprinting, we're doing prioritization and everything. Uh, you know, we, we, are, we, are, we are doing what do you, what do you want to do in a sprint? And but all of a sudden leaders come in and say, I need it by tomorrow, or I need it by within five days. What are you gonna do? Right? So that's that's where we wanna have the mindset top down and practice and kind of meets in the middle. Okay. Um, so quickly, I think I talked about this, but hey, one example, daily stand-up is not collaborative and engaging. So People talk about their updates, not concerned about other work, they're not supportive, not helpful. They may have a belief that I need to prove that I have completed my work so that I can impress my manager. That's their belief. Where that belief comes from? The experience that manager gives, his manager reviews all the user story at the end of the sprint, and they praise those who have completed the story and call upon people who have not completed them in negatively, right? 
So that's why the, the belief form. And then what do we need? Then if you want to have a new experience, if you want to change that, leadership has a role to play. So manager makes all the team accountable, no matter who's using it or not done. They also make it clear that either the whole sprint successful or not, regardless of, regardless of whose user story is not completed, encouraging the collective ownership, right? If that happens, then the person's belief might change. Let's say, okay, we need all of our user story to be done. So manager will not be happy. Doesn't matter whose user story is done, whose user story is not done. So then the behavior comes in. Let's get concerned about everything that's going on and help each other and all these things, right? And that's where you have engaging daily stand-up, right? So, so I think that gives you the kind of a basic general understanding. General understanding. Um, so the key is we have three things: um, prepare for the change, create right experience, and prioritize and practice it regularly. That's where our the lean spin method is all about, right? Now I think I'm okay. So I think I need to speed up here. Um, so um, here's, the, here's the five, five things that you need to prepare uh, yourself for the agile mindset change, right? So growth mindset, definitely. We need to have a growth mindset that, yep, I can learn, we can change, be intentional about it. We have to change our agile mindset. We have to be intentional about it. And self-awareness, right? We need to understand how we are behaving. We need to be aware of how we are behaving, right? Not only that, now next comes in the empathy, right? If we do not have empathy on others, then we'll not, we'll not, infor, we'll not be able to, able to in, uh, implement some of the agile mindset like collaboration and all those kind of things, right? And vulnerability, right? As a leader, we have to be vulnerable, right? And for anybody for that matter, right? That comes the safety, right? Because we need to be able to be true to ourselves and ready to be vulnerable in the team, right? So again, we don't have time, sorry. We could have done some activity and then we had gained some more insight on this. Um, but uh, I think we talked about that. And the, one of the key thing that I wanna kind of bring to your attention is now, once, once we have this thought, whatever our belief is, that's where we need to challenge ourselves, you know, challenge our thoughts. Just like, for example, what you thought is, is your inter, inter, inference true? Do you believe your inference? Could you be wrong? How else could you interpret this situation? Something happened. Let's say, for example, your friends were, did not wave at you, right? So then you need to challenge yourself. And you, you, you thought that he did not like you or whatever, but is it true? Do you really believe it? Could you be wrong? How could you interpret this situation differently? And then the modified thinking with the modified belief change the uh, actions and hence the result. So I'm just gonna dive into, um, hey Amit, how many minutes we have, sorry? So this will go till uh, next 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, sorry. So let's, let's quickly talk about this guy. So what happens is what do we need to do to, to behave with new as our mindset is identify the situation or event or trigger to apply mindset. When can I apply mind as our mindset? When, when I'm not thinking from agile perspective, we need to kind of understand that. We need to identify that, number one, right? And then identify current underlying belief. I'm thinking something. I'm interpreting that situation in some way, but why, what is my current underlying belief that's, that's pushing me to interpret that situation in that manner? I need to, I, we need to identify that. And what could be the potential current behavior and consequence? We need to identify that. We'll, we'll give you the example. And then comes the most challenging part. Number four, challenge your current belief and to align with agile values and principles. That's where you need to dispute your, what meaning you are giving to 
the situation. What meaning evaluation, how you are evaluating current situation, what your belief, right? You need to kind of uh, uh, dispute that belief, evaluation and inference, right? And out, out of that, then identify potential new behavior. How might you, you behave? And how, what might be the consequence, okay? So I'll give you some examples and see if kind of uh, helps you think it through. Again, remember this, identify situation or event, try to identify underlying belief, and then potential behavior and consequence and challenge it, your belief, and try to align with Agile values and principles, identify potential new behavior and potential new consequence. Okay. So let's say John did not finish his work on time for release. That's the situation that happened, right? So your belief may be is John responsibility and he's not being responsible, it's not, not acceptable. That's what you believe, that's what you infer. And your underlying belief was, everybody must be responsible and finish work on time. That's what you truly believe. Well, next step, potential could be, oh, I wanna escalate to manager. And the consequence maybe, or well, maybe manager talk to John, John knows that you complain, so pissed off at you, and he still, he did not deliver on time. Maybe he did a little bit for, for one sprint because manager told him and then he just falls back to whatever he, he was doing. So how could you challenge your belief, right? Is John really not being responsible? Has he shown that kind of behavior before as well? Is it really true, right? You need to challenge yourself, your thoughts. And here that comes in, again, you need to have growth mindset because you're trying to grow. You need to be intentional, said like, I wanna apply agile mindset. You need to be self-aware. If you're not self-aware, then you would not be able to think all the things. You'll just write there, react to it, and boom, right? To think these things when the situation happens, you need to be self-aware, right? Um, and you need to have empathy on John, because if you don't have empathy, uh, you know, you, you're not gonna think, uh, you're not gonna be ready to challenge, right? And then, so then you start thinking then, oh yeah, from Agile perspective, we don't need to have, don't we need to have collective ownership? And you kind of uh, try to remember Agile mindset. Right? Yeah, as a mindset, then we need to have collective ownership. So why I'm thinking that just he's not doing and da 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 da, right? And then it, that might help you to change your belief is our collective responsibility to complete the sprint. Maybe he has some difficulty. I don't know. Maybe he has some difficulty. And then obviously you say like, well, maybe I should ask John if he has any issues that holding him from completing his task or does he have anything going on in his family or in personal life, whatever it is. And then you found that John has a sick kid and couldn't focus. So then you offer help and get done, right? So the point is we need to break our cycle of this immediate reactions of the behavior, belief that we have and then react to it instead pause and see from agile perspective, what can we learn from agile mindset and try to infuse that, okay? Um, then the same thing at the next one, let's say some, some other situation and you are a leader, let's say, and you wanna create a right experience, right? Because that's why we wanna focus on because Mostly if the leaders create the right experience, then it's a lot easier for team to be agile. Because honestly, in general, I have seen team embracing agile more than leaders. So team tries to embrace agile mindset, but leaders don't and they fall, the things fall apart, right? Sorry, leaders out there. Um, so let's say situation is not getting idea from team in design meeting. 
let's say you are a technology manager, a you know, development manager, and you are not getting ideas from team in design meeting. Believe, what do you believe? Well, I was promoted to be a technical manager. I'm best technical person and I must guide my team uh, as I know more than them. So your belief is, you know, as a manager, I must know more. I must guide them. That may be your belief, right? And then potential behavior is you take over the meeting completely, tell them what is best design, be critical about the idea that you get from others. And you may, in, I have seen in up to a certain level where people try to prove others' idea do not make sense. And the crunch against team get disengaged, fear to give ideas, they might, and thinking they might be shut down, right? Again, hypothetical situation, but it's not far from the truth. So then you wanna challenge yourself as a manager. Does manager need to know more than team? You know, do, you, do I need to really need to more than team? I have not been doing coding for the last five years. Maybe my knowledge is not latest, right? Maybe they, they know more. And as I'll says, authority needs to be where the information is, right? Basically, people who actually do the work, they know more about it. That's what as I'll advocates and advocates the servant leadership, right? Not telling them all hows and all those things, but tell them what you want and then let them decide how, right? And maybe help them when they when needed help. Then basically, again, comes in the growth mindset that you are becoming intentional to use the Agile mindset. You are becoming self-aware, right? And then you have some definite empathy and you are ready to be vulnerable, right? Because as a leader, you say, no, I don't know. You guys know better. That's a being vulnerable, right? And then the belief comes in, oh, they, they are much closer to work than me. I must trust them. And I think they know better than me because they are working on the code every day, not me. Kind of change your belief, right? And maybe in addition, you may believe that, oh, maybe I should be more helping them when they need it instead of just taking over, right? So the behavior, maybe you'll listen to understand and not to identify fault on the ideas, right? Ask clarifying question with curiosity. Provide the main intent, outcome of the design that you are expecting. And maybe team feels respected, trusted, and you'll 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 be they will be more encouraged to bring their idea, right? And if you look at it here, if you just did not change your belief, and if you just try to sugarcoat it and change your behavior, it's gonna be very very hard. You'll struggle a lot. Just like for example, oh today I'm not gonna talk because I've been talking too much. It, it, still your if your belief is that you need to know more than them you are just attacking the behavior and that's not going to work so you have to go back to belief to change change how you are behaving and to get the right result okay and the another one sorry one last example um so let's say you are not getting enough engagement in retrospective. You are a change agent. Maybe you are a scrum master or you need change agent. And you believe that, wow, these people do not care about their continuous improvement. And then you, you generally, your underlying belief is that ah, people generally only motivated if, they, if it helps them individually. Maybe retrospective is a teamwork. So, you know, they're not interested. Behavior, you say that, well, oh, tell, tell them that um, management checking you know, if you guys are, you're just trying to enforce them. Hey guys, management checking. If you guys are doing any action item from retro meeting, um, you know, so you must do this uh, continuous improvement. Again, you are just trying to um, change their behavior, right? Consequence, they can come up with any simple, simple you know, action item just to please the management, right? And management not gonna review in detail. So, you know, just hide the real problems. It's, give them something crap, right? So, but then you wanna challenge yourself. Does team really do care about the continuous improvement? And do they actually, maybe they're not comfortable to bring up those things. Maybe 
managers there, or maybe you know they have a bad experience before somebody told their manager, whatever it is. And then you know that from Agile perspective, we want to build a psychological safety, right? So then you believe me, shift towards maybe team does not feel safe sharing feedback in a group. So maybe there was a manager, you tell manager, can you please not attend the retro? Um, you know, then Scrum Master, you do the safety check and you kind of give them comfort that, hey guys, this, whatever we talked about it stays here. And you don't even record that electronically, you just talk about it, right? Um, uh, and so, so that's, that's where kind of a, you, you change your behavior and at the, at the outcome, team may experience more safety to provide feed, feedback and they may be more engaged and open to participation, right? Again, some hypothetical situation, right? So I hope it, you got some ideas. Um, I don't know if uh, there's any way for me to get some feedback on a chat or anything. Um, yeah, you, you can also unmute and ask. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we have our four, five minutes, Amit. Yeah, yeah around six minutes. Six, to seven. six minutes. Have break after so if you, so if you wanna just take two, three minutes to think about some situation that happened and then follow this sequence and do it and then ask me question if you run into any situation or difficulty or if you have any questions for that matter. I have will says that, you know, we could spend some time, but of course, uh, you know, um, you know, we don't have much time. So uh, that, that would give you experience and you can really ask true question when you run into difficulties. But go, if you have any question, please go ahead. Does it make sense? I know it's like a really rust. I mean, it's a half a day session. Yeah. So if anyone have any questions, so great presentation. Or, or any, you can ask me in the chat. So if you have time, then maybe you should take uh, take one situation where where what that happened, and then try to identify what's the situation, what are your current belief, uh, what would be the potential behavior consequence, and try to challenge your challenge your belief, challenge your belief, and see if we if we get uh, if we get a uh, Kind of a new potential behavior and new potential consequence, if you if you would. And there was another one: prioritize and work iteratively. Basically, you know, like there are a lot of mindsets, so you just need to prioritize them based on your organization and kind of iterate it through. Um, here's the one link. There is a link in uh, LinkedIn article that I posted it. Uh, you can go there and you can, you can. What is one thing, uh, sorry, does mindset mean how one feels about the situation? Analyze how, how oh, okay. So mindset is almost like a belief, right? It's a belief that you have that well, you over the period of time experience, you have certain belief within yourself. And when new situation comes in, you apply that belief to interpret the new situation that comes in, right? So for example, let's say, um, let's say you have a belief that I was saying before, a technical manager must know better than team, let's say, I'm just giving an example, right? That's an ingrained belief that you have. And that's why you behave saying that, well, yeah, you know, like you need to do this, you need to do that, da, 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 da. That's the belief. That's the belief that created by experience for a long period of time. So it's not the, it's not the how you, feel about the situation, how you feel about situation is outcome of the belief that you have. 
Okay. Um, what could one, I don't know, I hope I answered your question there. What is one thing you could suggest Nepalese management to develop growth mindset versus fixed mindset? It's a tough one. Um, there are certain things that, <clears throat> that people need to realize themselves. It's hard to change people unless and until they realize themselves. You can create the situation, you can give the materials, you can suggest them, but it's, it's they have to change themselves. So if I have to give one suggestion from growth minds, how to develop growth mindset, probably, honestly, it's not a one point that I would give. I probably would give them some material, just like an article, in a short article, hey, go ahead and read it, right? Um, <clears throat> that, because they have to realize it. It's hard to, hard to change their mind. Um, is challenging belief helpful in individual level or team level? Well, both, both. First, you need to challenge your belief. And then if there is a group belief that if we all believe as a group, then absolutely challenge the group belief as well. So if you want to change your, change your, uh, mindset, own mindset as a servant leader so that it reflects in behavior. That's where we need to do. Like uh, when the situation happens, then you need to analyze the situation. And then you basically say that, what is it? Is it what, whatever the belief that you have, is it serving you or not? Is it aligned to agile value or not? So basically you need to have, you need to have a self-awareness when that situation happens so that you can pause and take time to reflect what you are thinking, what you are believing, and what should be the belief, right? If you want to be servant leader, definitely, I'm sure you must have read what are the attributes or values of servant leadership, okay? I think, uh, I mean, we're out of our time. Yeah, so after this, we have a break, so you can take a few minutes if you want. Okay. Uh, thank you. Some want to be well rounded and some expert. Aren't both good? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's good. I'm not saying that um, managers should not, should not know the technical, technical piece of it. Yes, absolutely. The only I'm inferring on there is provide provide a space for team to come up with their ideas. Because if your team is like five people, and if you're one manager, the group, five, what five people can and can come up with, it's a lot more than what you, one single person can come up with. And it's not sustainable either, right? As a leader, when you really focus on how, then, then you, your other strategic work will get hampered, right? There may be other strategic work that you need to do as a, as a, as a um, technical manager, right? You may need to look at the, what's new technology coming in. You need to be abreast of the practices, industry practices, and all those things. So that's re really nothing wrong, but we just need to make sure that we give value to people to bring in their ideas. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, so the link is there. Uh, I think, let me see if I have link still here. Yeah, here's the, uh, here's the, okay. I'm, I think somebody asked for the link and link for the um, article is here. here is the link for the article. Well, um, that's a maybe uh, SBR 70 percent as a practice report problem between teams and rest of the organization. How can communication gap be solved? I think that's a that's a bigger conversation, honestly. Um, but there are a lot of lot of ways. Um, you know, <clears throat> how come the the key is the alignment. The key is the alignment. And if you if you are interested, you can uh, learn about OKR. Um, 
uh, objective and key result uh, at the organization level, at the team level, at a, you know, that has been very successful on bringing the alignment across the organization. Um, so definitely you can, you can kind of work on that one. Okay. Anyways, thank you so much uh, for, for attending. Really, really appreciate your time. Hopefully it makes sense. Please feel free to link with LinkedIn with me. Um, send me your thoughts and all those things. I love to hear from you. Um, and as I said, I have that link send link below there. So, you know, uh, you can, you can definitely, um, you know, read more and then ask me. And if you need to, if your organization need really need help, if you really want some half an hour session or so, definitely feel free. We can, we can chat more. And, um, for, for the organizer, thank you so much for opportunity. Really appreciate it. Great job. Thank you.